Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to get Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, and all of our favorite streaming apps up and running on the Raspberry Pi 4 officially, because we now officially have Widevine support on the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Pi 400. In the past, if you wanted to watch Netflix or HBO Max or anything that needs Widevine in order to run on an operating system, we couldn't do it with the Raspberry Pi 4 and the stock browser. Now, there were ways around it. You could always download a third-party browser. The one that I always used was created by Vince over at vpetkov.net, and I'll leave a link for that in the description. But now, the Raspberry Pi Foundation is officially supporting Widevine on the Pi 4 and the Pi 400. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get it up and running. I mean, it's really easy to do. As you can see with Netflix here, I was unable to play that video. Same thing with HBO Max. I'll just give you another little demo. I don't have the Widevine support installed just yet. We're going to go over the installation in just a sec. I mean, it's super easy to do, but I just wanted to show you here. Anytime you go to a major streaming app that requires Widevine, it's just kind of going to flake out on you. You're unable to play this video. It doesn't matter if it's Amazon Prime, Hulu, Netflix, HBO Max, or even Spotify. It just won't work without Widevine support. But now it's officially supported by the Raspberry Pi Foundation using the built-in browser. And we're going to go ahead and install it. Let's go ahead and get this installed. This is actually coming to us from Vince over at vpetcov.net. Really easy to do. We're going to go ahead and open up Terminal. Everything will be linked in the description. And uh, by the way, Vince was the one who did the original Widevine Media Browser. And if you just want to install that, you can actually use his one-liner here. But we're going to go with the official version. All links for everything mentioned will be in the description. First thing we need to do is update our system. Obviously, we will need to be connected online in order for this to work. So we're just going to run a sudo apt update. I'm fully up to date here. Next, we're going to do a full upgrade. So we'll run a sudo apt full upgrade. And finally, we're going to install Widevine here. Give it a few seconds to install. Now I recommend doing a reboot, and you can do that by going up here to the top left-hand corner, or you can just type in sudo reboot. All right, so now that we have it installed and we've done our reboot, we can head back over to Netflix or any of your favorite streaming apps. I'll just go ahead and choose this one here. I will have to blur the screen because uh, it's copyrighted material, but I just wanted to show you that it is now working with the built-in browser in Raspberry Pi OS, and it actually works out pretty well. I'll skip ahead a little bit here. And like I said, I will have to add something on screen. These berries will not be present when you're viewing Netflix on your Raspberry Pi. Just keep that in mind. I just threw them in here. It's time for Mr. Versus assigned therapy. But yeah, I mean, Netflix is working. So let's go ahead and move over to HBO Max. And I just went ahead and signed in here. Got a video playing. I didn't get interrupted with any warnings or anything like that, so HBO Max is also playable. And like I mentioned, this works with Hulu, Amazon Prime, as you saw, Netflix, HBO Max, Spotify, and there's tons of other streaming sites that do require Widevine in order to view videos, so we can now do it officially on the Raspberry Pi 4 or the Raspberry Pi 400. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I'm glad that the Raspberry Pi Foundation has finally added this to the built-in browser in Raspberry Pi OS. This will definitely make this operating system a bit more appealing to some people. We don't have to jump through a ton of hoops to get this up and running, and it should be supported in the future in official builds of Raspberry Pi OS. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.